Hello, let's move on to the next uh, clip for chapter five. I think this is clip number four that we're in. Yes, clip four, uh, slides 21 through 29. And so we're looking at objectives and constraints. And we talked about risk tolerance. Now let's look at returns. So first you establish their risk tolerance by looking at their emotional makeup, their financial uh, circumstances, and their investment time horizon. Once you know what they're able to tolerate in terms of risk, then we can start looking at returns from the asset classes. Okay? All right. So, uh, once again, we have to educate the client about the returns for various uh, asset alternatives, upwards to 11%, 11-12% for small cap stocks, downward to 2% right now on uh, intermediate term bonds. Okay? And we frame the objective as an absolute percentage. What is our goal of uh, our return goal? 5%, 6%, 7%. Okay? Relative performance. How do we want to do against the market? And, you know, now we start getting a little bit sketchy. It depends on whether you're an active manager trying to beat the market or an index manager trying to uh, meet the market. Okay? And then a real return, return after inflation. This is not going to be important for uh, most individual clients. It is important for institutional clients, okay? Or in general terms, I'm not exactly sure what that means. All right. All right. So what are some return objectives? Well, maybe this is what it means, general terms. What are we trying to do with our portfolio? The most defensive type of portfolio, capital preservation. Preserve what you already have. Okay. These clients are very risk averse. They don't want to take a lot of risk. They want to minimize their losses, but they do want to beat inflation. Okay. And please keep this in mind, there's always risk. You can't run away from risk. It's either inflation risk or price risk or currency risk. There's all kinds of risks out there. And you can't put it in a safe and think that you're avoiding risk. You're not. You've got inflation risk. Okay. Then we have capital appreciation. So capital preservation, now we have capital appreciation. It's more aggressive. You're trying to increase the value of the portfolio through capital gains. Then we have current income. You try to generate an income stream either by high dividends and or interest payments. So a stream of income coming out of the portfolio or by supplementing the income by liquidating stock that appreciates. And we call this a total return approach where you take dividends and interest out of the portfolio and then you sell a little bit of, of the portfolio over time to generate income that you take out of the portfolio. Okay, so those are three big return objectives. Preservation, appreciation, and income. All right. Another way of looking at investing is, and your returns, is lifestyle investing. Okay, or life cycle, not lifestyle, life cycle investing. Recognize that the pattern of income, expenses, investing, and risk tolerance will change over time. Okay, your reality changes over time. So we're going to assume that you have adequate cash reserves and that you have, have adequate insurance as we look at your uh, investments. So we have the accumulation phase. Okay, this happens between ages 22 and 40. It's your early to middle years of your working career. You are accumulating assets. You're buying your house, your cars, your clothes, you're having your children, you're, you're starting to accumulate money for education, okay? And relatively low income during these years, and hopefully you're building up, okay? And so you have lots of accumulation, not that much income to begin with, and so your saving is not as great in these years and you have accumulation of debt along with the assets. So we call this the accumulation phase. Accumulation of debt, accumulation of assets, uh, and not so much accumulation of savings and wealth. Your time horizon during this period is very long. Your investment time horizon is long. Your investment strategy should be pretty aggressive because your time horizon is long. Okay? And so what you're looking at is capital appreciation during the accumulation phase, okay? And you're gonna overweight stocks, okay? Vastly, all right, overweight stocks. Then you enter the consolidation phase, okay? That's ages 40 through 65, and this is the sweet spot, baby. You gotta make it now. Your income is high, 
Most of your assets have been accumulated. Most of your debt hopefully has been paid off. This is kind of the general script. Not everybody follows it. Okay? Your time horizon is still long. You're not going to need the money for a long period of time. But the years of earnings capacity are starting to dwindle. The older you get, as you start approaching that 60 to 65 age group, that's when most people want to retire. Okay? Your investment strategy should become increasingly less aggressive as retirement approaches. You're starting to move from capital appreciation to income and preservation. Okay? So you're going to add more bonds and subtract stocks. Okay? Then we're at the spending phase. And this is the last phase, 65 to the end, okay, 80 years of age or so. Income is generated from your retirement plans, from your social security, and from any other investments, okay, pensions and investments. Expenses are primarily for living, you know, food, medical, okay. Um, hopefully you're, you're no longer caring for your children or your parents. They're probably long gone. Your parents are. And your time horizon becomes pretty limited. Um, you need cash on a regular basis, and so you're not going to have that much uh, in stocks. You're going to be focusing on capital preservation and current income. And that means you're going to overweight bonds over stocks. Okay? And then c concurrent with the uh, spending phase is the gifting phase. Okay, and again, so it is 65 to 80, and you're thinking about you need a certain amount of money to s support your lifestyle, but you also are thinking in terms of supporting children, grandchildren, charitable causes. Okay, so many older folks want to pass along assets, therefore, a portion of the portfolio will have a long time horizon. Okay, that's the gifting part and should be managed for capital appreciation. Okay, so remember this that when you pass along assets to uh, beneficiaries, then they get to start a new cost basis uh, when they inherit the security. So if you bought a stock for 20 and it's now selling for 80, if you pass it along to your children or grandchildren, then they get that $80 cost basis. If it goes up to 100, instead of paying a gain of 80 minus 20, or uh, of $100 minus $20 cost that you had, which is an $80 gain that'll be taxed, they would get have a gain of 100 minus what they inherited from you at 80, only a gain of 20. So that's real helpful for them. All right, let's see how far we go. We have uh, two more slides, 28, 29. All right, another way to look at your portfolio is to invest to meet specific goals. Rather than viewing a portfolio as one entity, okay, you can match up certain types of investments with specific planned expenditures. So what do I mean by that? For example, you anticipate putting a down payment on a house within three years. So you will invest some money toward the goal of having it available in three years. Okay? So you would have capital preservation as that part of the portfolio. Okay? On the other hand, if you're funding your child's education in 15 years, you would invest a certain amount of your portfolio for capital appreciation for that goal. And as you start hitting that time period when you're going to need the money, then you start shifting over from capital appreciation to capital preservation. Okay? So viewed this way, your portfolio would consist of a variety of investments bundled together to meet specific needs. So you can look at your investments as one big pot or as different buckets that are set up to meet certain goals. Okay? All right, so investor constraints. Let's see, I think we just hit our clip limit here. We did, so let's go ahead and take a quick break and we'll come back and talk more about uh, in other investor constraints. Shalom.